Christ as satisfaction works where law does not. We need to realize that in the Bible, there is law and gospel. Law points, or excuse me, law puts the demand on me. The gospel transfers the demand off of me and puts it where it belongs, on Christ, who wants to be my life. Amen. Law tells me what I should and shouldn't do. Gospel satisfies me, satisfies me with Christ and nourishes me with him as my food and drink to become my life. Amen. To the degree that I know how to abide in the gospel, Christ can be manifested in my life as my sanctification. Amen. People hear the gospel for justification and realize that Christ is their righteousness, but then stumble when they come to growth, which they like to call sanctification. Then they are taught that sanctification is a matter of commandments and law keeping. No, sanctification is carried out the same way justification is. Amen. It is by believing in Christ. Amen. By believing, we come unto the supply of the Spirit to receive Him as life, moment by moment. When we believe the gospel, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit. We received the Spirit. Likewise, the way the present supply of the Spirit works is also through the hearing of faith and not the works of the law. Amen. Ephesians 1.13 in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you were, excuse me, that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. Galatians 3, 5. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Amen. Furthermore, I need to learn to understand the power of sin and truly fear the Lord. Fearing the Lord doesn't mean I'm afraid of him because he's going to punish me. It is to respect his role in my life. Amen. Regarding sin, it is the Lord's mercy that keeps me from sinning, not my effort. Amen. Until I understood that, I was trying by my own effort to keep myself from sin. But I didn't have the basic desire quenched. Amen. My hunger and thirst for righteousness were not satisfied, and my hunger and thirst for sin were raging. It was years of torture. I tried everything, Bible reading, gospel preaching, church programs, all kinds of things. I tried more than anyone I knew. What I found was that none of those things did anything to quench the thirst, in fact, or quench the thirst. In fact, they just exaggerated it. I lived under condemnation because I was doing things to try to strive for holiness, which I thought was a patchwork of my works and not a person, Jesus Christ. Sorry, I feel like I'm reading my own story here. Whew. Uh... Thank you, Lord. Which I thought was a patchwork of my works and not a person, Jesus Christ. My religious activity just served as a backdrop against which my sin was that much more magnified. The more I got involved with the holy service of God, the more inwardly I knew I was condemned. I knew it didn't, mat I knew it didn't matter if I engaged in the deed. My heart was still full of those thoughts. The law is the strength of sin, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six. Amen. And my religious pursuit caused the sin to rage in me. God eventually led me to see that sanctification, or a better way to say it is renewing and transformation, comes the same way we get saved. Amen. We hear, the, we hear and believe the word. The word that justifies is the word that Christ died for my sins. I'm the ungodly sinner and he became sin for me. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for me and my sins were put on him and he's forgiven me. Amen. He took my sins away and rose from the dead. Now he is my advocate and my propitiation. 
1 John 2, 1. Amen. I knew how to believe this and enjoy the reality of forgiveness and believe I was cleansed. Amen. 